Welcome back to My Hero Academia Anime Review Episode 142. This I'm discussing uh, basically the 120th episode of the series, Disaster Walker, and the 374th chapter of the manga. Oh, and also, there will not be a new chapter next week. Now, does that mean I'm moving into Saturday? No. I'm keeping it on Sunday because so I've only got two shows, so there you go. There you go. So we first start off basically in Jakku City. We're basically got two locations. The first portion of the episode is set in Jakku City, and we switch over to the villa. Let's focus on Jakku City first because that's where the episode starts off. So <clears throat> this episode does pretty much cover chapter, I think it was uh, 276. The first three pages in 14 to 21, and the entirety of pages, chapters of 277 to 278. Excuse me, if you're curious though, by this point of the arc, like how much is left to go to be adapted for the arc, uh, for the anime. There is exactly 28 chapters left. Yep, 28. So most people continue having, well, Sororoki getting, getting the crap out of him by Endeavor. And of course, Eraserhead basically has a good character level for him, where basically, where at one point, Sororoki want, wants to kill him off, but he can't because he says, I can't die yet because I still protect my students. Excuse me, yep. And of course, we also have Deku, Deku and Bako chipping in here. <coughs> the fight, of course, well, uh, the fight Shodoroki. The reason why? Because all the rest of our heroes are fighting the giant Nemus. And of course, the doctor explains they're near end Nemus. Basically, they're not completely yet. Yep. And that's it for that segment. Now, in the case of what happens at the compound, well, we have giant Machia where he gets out of the compound. Takes out pretty much all the League of Villains. And Mr. Compress, seeing that to Toga looks like he's practically almost naked, gives some clothes because basically trying to get, just trying to help her out, which is quite nice of him to do that. And of course, basically, Dobby, before he leaves, takes Skeptic with him because he's needed. So, and then we have Mott Lady basically get a chance to fight, uh, hold him off for a little while. He's like, Master, I'm coming. And Mallory's like, where are you going, big guy? And she's like, doing this, like, holding him, trying to hold him in place. And, of course, Midnight tries to come around and knock him unconscious. But he gets, she gets blown away by Mr. Compress and Dobby. And, of course, she contacts Momo to say it's up to her to deal with Giant Machia. And then, of course, she's soon to be attacked by a group of Seelist villains. So, Earjack, who basically heard us a long while back, like, doesn't become basically a giant Machia. And, of course, both heroes go deal with the other villains. Basically, Kriti is tasked to creating a bunch of tranquilizers. And, of course, having Tentacruel and Earjack basically figure out how far he is away, though Earjack at one point can actually see him. Basically, the, the whole point is trying to assist the pro heroes, take him down. That's simple just as that. Absolute great episode. Can't wait for next week. And it just seems as though we're basically just a handful of episodes into the season. And it seems like the one voice actor who's getting a lot of lines this season is, well, not the main character, is one of the students, is Endeavor. Endeavor gets a good amount of lines in comparison to that. Mount Lady. Yes. <laughs> It just seems as though listening to Jane Marcelli, listening to her uh, portraying the character, it just seems like she's having so much fun with this character. Heck, even uh, Kyle Herbert agrees with that, that she's having so much fun with this character. Yeah, and of course, also, I can't forget to mention Eliz Maxwell when she's portraying Midnight. She's doing an absolute great job with it. This why I think she hasn't paid very much. She's doing a great job with her. Alright, next up, uh, we have the new shadow manga, Butterfly Effect. We see President Mike, where he is confronting Warpgate. But meanwhile, the battle is going on. We have a weather port. Yes, a weather port. 
but various weather going on. And this goes on for a couple pages. Then we see Burning, yes, Burning, where she helps out Shudo. Excuse me. To take on Dobby, who basically is, I look like he's falling apart. Like fighting, fighting, fighting. Then we see. <laughs> we cut to where Deku is. He's fighting Best Chance, and of course, well, he fight with Best Chance and uh, Lamillion. Fighting against Sidoroki. Then we see a, a present might bring out via warp gate. Razor sees this, and here's Dobby. And then, for some reason, Twice is back. Yeah, this is weird. He's like, oh, Hawks. You got a front row seat, Takumi. Learn how much you have made his dead type priority. He says, kill him right now. I'm like, Die twice? The guy died, now he's back? What the heck? Seriously, what in the world? Yeah, by far one of the most strangest endings I have ever seen to this, to this particular chapter be. Twice? A character who died. He got freaking stabbed, and yet he's here he is alive and well, for apparently for no reason. Yep. But yeah, that's particular... Oh, by the way... Excuse me, I get the chapter roughly a 9 out of 10 because that, oh, like a jaw dropping ending to the manga, to the chapter. Yep. But yeah, that's it for the Uh Next up is a comic corner and it's on to One Piece. See you next video. Bye.